Croc stock is rocking today. The footwear maker churning out record 2022 revenues, sidestepping the post-pandemic drop seen by other at-home products. Crocs once again impressing investors with quarterly earnings. And let's take a deeper dive and a deeper look at where Croc stands with an analysis from Business School Brad. That's the hat he's wearing today. Yes, yes. Business Class Brad over here at the Wi-Fi Interactive. And we're taking you to some SWOT analysis here on Crocs. Take a look at the stock reaction, as Julie was mentioning a moment ago. Right now, higher by about... 8% here. And here's what we're going to run through. Some of the strengths, the weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. We're going to start things off with the strengths that the company is seeing. Number one, regional diversification. Take a look at that Asia Pacific region. You saw some strong growth, about 47% last year. The design equity as well, a major part of that Croc story. You think about how often you'll see people out on the street with anything that even looks similar to a Croc, and you're saying, oh, it's got to be Crocs, right? It's not always the case, but in this instance, that certainly has got them into the mind share of many consumers who might be looking for one of those comfort clogs out there. And let's talk about the era of customization. Those gibbets has worked so well as a strategy. You may have seen a viral moment over the course of the holiday season when grandpa, one grandpa out there made a gibbet in his face shape and gave it to all of his grandkids. So that went viral. That's working out well for them. So that's one of the strengths there. You also think about one of the weaknesses here. On the other side of those strengths, you've got some weaknesses. So one of those, you've got some tough comps that are going to be coming on as you lap the year that was 2022, which was a record year for them in a record quarter that we just came off of for Crocs as well. So coming off of that strong revenue year where they saw those records, some of the analysts out there on the street, UBS particularly, has been sounding the alarm on margin contraction there. So keep a close eye on that. And then additionally, the company has acknowledged that it needs to do better and diversify diversifying its women's product range. And so Andrew Rees, the CEO, on the last earnings call prior to this quarter, did acknowledge that they needed to get a little bit more diversified in the number of products that they were making appealing in the women's category here on Crocs as well. Brad, how do they stack up versus competitors? That's a great question. And that is exactly where it takes me to some of those opportunities here because it dovetails exactly into their their uh, penetration that they're seeing, but also where that brand perception is starting to hold up and expand even more so. So I'm glad you asked, Saz. Number one, the expanding wear and use cases in this most recent um, Piper Sandler taking stock with teen survey that was in fall of 2022. It's a semi-annual and Crocs actually increased from the number six position, was able to get up to that number five position. And that was up against some brands like Nike, like Lululemon. So that is critical for them. Their Hey Dude brand actually move from number nine to number seven. So that also a little bit of wind in their sails. And then you think about the sandal penetration. We're going to be looking at that expanding wear category and the sandal penetration. You're going to be thinking about Crocs and everything from healthcare workers having it on their feet to travelers and vacationers just wanting some comfy shoes or clogs on their feet. Athletes even in the post athletic performance cycle, they're going to be wanting to wear something other than those Adidas sandals that had the little rubber thingies that kind of shot up into our feet uh, for so long. And then the fashion adjacency here in the resale economy, that's also working well as an opportunity. But lastly, we got to talk about the threats in this quick SWOT analysis because the inventory fluctuation is an issue for them. And then additionally, a shift towards bio-based plastics. So just very briefly on the inventory fluctuation, they still do have some snags in terms of overhead in how much they have to account for the inventory that's being taken up by wholesalers and where that inventory is actually being stored because of the integration of that Hey Dude brand that's continuing to move on. And then additionally, in their shift towards being more environmentally sustainable, which we can applaud and commend, this is going to mean they have to be looking for other sources of plastics. And in that move for other sources of plastics, it might cost them just a little bit more. They've got to pay up for them and make sure that they can get enough supply and materials is going to be one of those particular threats that they have to weather through as well in that shift. And they're already pretty expensive for plastic shoes. Yeah, I thought they were made from trees. No, not made from trees. No, not yet. I mean, I don't, do we want them to be made from trees? <laughs> I don't know what we e want them to be made from. Equilibrium is the is the ah. plastic that many are watching for them to move over to. Nice. Equilibrium. Equilibrium, <laughs> as they try to maintain equilibrium. Julie ain't buying that one. She's not All buying right. it.